Okay, in the next section, I'm going to talk about labeling requirements for medical devices and the current regulations around labeling. So I have a think about the question uh, before I continue. So what should a label have on it for a medical device? Uh, what do you think? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Okay, so we'll come up with the answer in a minute. Uh, but what a label is according to the uh, Food and Drug Administration is a display of written, printed or graphic matter upon the immediate container of any article. So the primary packaging, all labels and other written, printed or graphic matter is, is labeling. Uh, one upon any article or any of its containers or wrappers or two accompanying such article at any time while a device is held for sale after shipment or delivery for shipment in interstate commerce. Okay, so uh, that's the definition of labels. It should be on the primary packaging. Labeling uh, re refers to what is on the primary packaging, might be on the secondary packaging, and it would accompany the article as well. So for any product insert constitutes a label. Um, so uh, according to the FDI, FDA guidelines, um, what should be on a label? Uh, so the first is the name and place of the business. Uh, so it should contain the name and place of the business of manufacturer, uh, packer or distributor, including the street address, city, state and zip code. Uh, if the firm listed on the label is not the manufacturer, the firm information must be qualified by an appropriate statement such as manufactured for or distributed by. Um, so the, the manufacturer name should be there somewhere and also who has um, distributed it. So the next thing that needs to be uh, on the label is the intended use. So if the seller intends device for uses other than those intended by the person for whom he received the device, uh, those parties must furnish adequate labeling in accordance with the new intended use. Okay, so the intended use is very important, and I'll give an example. There should be adequate directions for use. The directions under which the layman can use a device safely and for the purposes intended. So uh, this includes statements of purposes for which and conditions under which the device can be used, the quantity of dose for each and neutral quantities for persons of different ages and physical conditions. Frequency of administration, duration of application, time of administration in relation to other factors, route or method of application, and any preparation necessary for use. Uh, so these are the uh, adequate directions for use that must be included. Now, there's other label requirements for in vitro diagnostic devices. Um, and these are to have the established and proprietary names of the product. Okay, so example, uh, cholesterolometers. The intended use or uses, so for example, pregnancy detection, diabetes screening, etc. A statement of warning or precautions for users lifted, listed in 16 CFR Part 1500, so hazardous substances. So are there any hazardous substances uh, that need to be warned against? Uh, a statement that says for in vitro diagnostic use. The name and the place of the business of the manufacturer, packer, distributor, similar to a typical medical device. The lot or the control number traceable to the production history. Multiple unit products must have traceability of individual units. Instrument lot numbers must allow for traceability of sub assemblies. And a multiple unit pro product that requires use of its components as a system should have units, have the same lot number or other suitable uniform identification. Okay, so um, they are the labeling requirements for in vitro diagnostic devices. And other uh, labeling requirements in general. Uh, so there are standard symbols such as an ISO standard or CE certification. Uh, which absolutely has to be there if the product is being sold uh, on the EU market, European market, the CE mark has to be on the device. A, the manufacture or the sterilization date can be included um, and often is expiry date. 
uh, lot number and part of catalog number uh, have to be there. Uh, so this is an example of label. Um, so we have a brand name, a um, is trademarked, a GMDM description. I talked about these earlier on in the course. Uh, it's a global nomenclature system. Um, so it's the size, so there's a catalog number, a lot number, a use by date. Uh, for single use, so it's saying do not use twice. Okay, uh, do not use if package is damaged. Uh, and then there's this little symbol of a factory, which is the manufacturer. Uh, so we have the manufacturer's name, address, uh, zip code, phone number, website. Um, and then there are other um, t t uh, guidelines about storage and handling. Okay, there's one part in this package. And, um, and then there's this unique device identifier, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Okay, so they are the, the uh, what has to be there, and, and in addition to that, the directions for use. So a unique device identification is uh, being required by the FDA now. Uh, they're phasing it in over a number of years. They started in 2013, and they're, they're kind of predicting that it will be phased in over the next seven years, that every medical device, uh, there are some exemptions, but uh, for the most part, medical devices will have to have this UDI or unique di device identification on them. Um, uh, that could be a barcode, uh, like what was shown in the last example, uh, but whatever way it is, it has to enable automatic identification and data capture by a computerized system. Um, so it is a way of um, that once your device uh, gets onto the market, that there is full traceability from the manufacturer to the end product. So that UDI stays with the device throughout its life cycle um, and it's available in a database. So UDI, UDI implementation will improve patient safety. It will modernize devices post-market surveillance. Uh, and facilitate medical device uh, innovation. So you will be able to track medical devices over their life cycle. Uh, so what it is, it's a unique numeric or alphanumeric code that consists of two parts. So the first is the device identifier, and that's a mandatory fixed portion that identifies the labeler and the specific version of a, med of a model or a device. And the production identifier is a conditional variable that identifies one or more of the following. So it includes the lot or the batch number, uh, the serial number, the expiration date, the date it was manufactured, or the distinct identification code uh, required for human cell or cellular and tissue-based products. Okay, um, so the labeler of each medical device labeled with a UDI must submit information concerning that device to uh, GUDID, uh, which is the Global Unique Device Identification Database. So what's going to happen when all of this uh, is fully in place, um, and, and some of it is already, so companies are converting over to UDIs uh, now, um, is that uh, once you've assigned a UDI to your device, which consists of, of, of the two parts which I talked about, then you enter that information into a global database. Once then that device um, leaves the factory, it's scanned. Once it arrives at its destination, it's scanned. Before it goes into a patient, it's scanned. And, uh, and everybody knows uh, for each stage of the life cycle where the device is actually at. So it allows uh, more accurate reporting, obviously, reviewing, um, analyzing of adverse events. So problem devices can be identified and corrected more quickly. Um, so if there's a problem with a device, you can find the specific patient to whom that device has gone to and, and recall it quickly. You can reduce medical errors. Um, so, you know, if there's a call, um, you know, halt the device, um, it's very, very easy to find that on the shelf. It enhances analysis of devices on the market. So you can get an awful lot of post-market um, surveillance and analysis on the efficacy of these devices. It provides a standardized identifier that allows manufacturers, distributors, and healthcare facilities to more effectively manage the recalls. And it provides a foundation for global secure distribution chains. 
And uh, this is the example given on the FDA website of what it should look like. So similar to the last example I gave you. So this is the GMDM name, uh, or so that this is the, the, the brand name, the GMDM name, and um, sizing, catalog number, lot number, similar to the last time, single use, storage conditions, manufacturer uh, details, and this is the UDI here. Okay, so each part of that code uh, represents the, the different aspects of the um, device. So um, the catalog number 123456 is first, uh, or so the lot number uh, comes first, and then the different aspects of that code uh, make up the uh, different information on the device. Okay, so that's it on labeling. And um, I'm going to move on to sterilization in the next section. Thank you.